Hey everybody and welcome to Ask Dr. Heather. My name is Dr. Heather Cardin and this is Dr. Ralph Cardin. Super special guest here. So we're going to actually help answer some of those questions we've been getting about testing your blood mm. ketones. So we did get a new meter in the mail today. So the question is if you're on a ketogenic diet, a true ketogenic diet, yes you should be checking your blood ketones. If you're on a low carb paleo um, Mediterranean vegan ve veg vegetarian diet and you're drinking exogenous ketones no you don't always have to check your ketones however if you're doing intermittent fasting and you're doing calorie restriction you ought to be checking your ketones because you want to make sure you're not losing lean muscle mass so let's talk about the different options of how you can actually check your ketones what some of the better options are some of the best options so as you're joining let me know you're joining from we're coming to you live from Overland Park at Cardin Center for Wellness where we have practiced 24 years. 25 years, actually. Dr. Ralph graduated 25, 26 years ago. Yeah, 26 years ago. So we opened up our shack 25 years ago. So one of the very simplest, most economical ways to check, which is actually not the most reliable, is actually using a urine strip. So number one, no matter if you're using a breath, blood, or urine, make sure they're actually in date. And make sure when you open these up, you make sure you write the date because in less than 90 days, these actually will expire. So even if the expiration date says 2024, but you open these up maybe last November, they potentially could be expired. They're only good 90 days once you break the seal. So you can check them. Anything that changes the color means yes, you're in ketosis. So that's a good way to use them. You can use them throughout the day. So maybe you actually check before you eat your lunch, your breakfast, your dinner, then you check them a couple hours after you eat and it could say, no, you're not in ketosis. Then you know the food that you ate actually broke your ketosis actually because it raised your blood glucose and actually lowered your ketone level. Or you could actually check your level and then go do a killer workout. It could say, no, you're not in ketosis, but you actually burn, could burn through all your glucose and glycogen and actually could potentially put you in ketosis naturally. So lots of different ways to biohack and check yourself. So I'm actually going to turn the blood meter section over to Dr. Ralph because we just got a brand new blood meter. So we actually were first using, I know I put him on the spot, but he likes to interrupt me. So that's okay. So we were using a precision meter for many, many years, but the old meters before Keto Mojo came out, you had to have two separate meters, one for blood glucose and one for blood ketones. And this was probably five plus years ago before, before Snapchat, before Instagram, before Reels, before TikTok, you actually had to have two meters. Yes, a long time ago. So now the great thing is you can actually have one meter and there's a couple different companies that actually check for both. So you don't have to buy two different meters. So we had the old Keto Mojo meter, which was fantastic, which was this one that checks your blood glucose. A different strip would actually check your blood ketones, but the blood glucose would also check your hemoglobin, your hematocrit. So if you're having a tendency, you've lost quite a bit of weight, your body's got a new body composition, you've had some fat loss, uh, potentially of maybe getting um, anemic or your B12 actually getting lowered, you see that H and H actually start to go down lower. That's a good time to check with your healthcare provider. There's information you can check on that. But I'm going to have him show you what the new one looks like. So this is the old one. We actually went to go get new strips and they were unavailable because they're actually switching to a new one, which is a great model. So I'm going to switch out of the way. Wow. So that's the new model. Basically does the same thing. Uh, I actually haven't done the homework since I'm being put on the spot as to why they made an upgrade. That's certainly something you can find on the website. Um, what I do notice is that uh, with the new um, strips, sorry, they're individually wrapped. So just like Dr. Heather was mentioning, uh, a lot of times what happens is that when you're in the bottle like this, uh, you'll open them, you'll use them, randomly use them, and then what will end up happening is you'll go beyond that 90-day expiration time, and then they start giving you faulty readings. Um, I had that experience a few weeks ago with our old meter. We still had strips in the in the 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 original ca um, canister and i registered like 6.0 on my ketones which i barely struggled to get a little bit over 1.0 and so then i rechecked it right away and i was at 2.4 and then i rechecked it again and then i was at 0.8 and that's when i realized oh our strips are dated <laughs> so we need to get new strips and that's when i discovered that uh, keto mojo's old strips are discontinued, not that they're not available, they're just discontinued and they've gone to this individual wrapper system. 
So. So I'm gonna say. So that's a good thing. So when you get kind of a crazy reading like that, like if you've been checking and you get something crazy like 6.0, and you know, no, that's not normal for your body. You're not feeling different. That's when you actually want to use the calibration system or. Be a better detective and say, you know what, I'm not feeling different. It shouldn't be reading that high. I'm not really dry mouth. My urine's not super concentrated. I didn't go run a marathon. I didn't fast for five or six days. I've been doing the same thing I've been doing. Recheck right away or recalibrate them with the solution that they have. They have a great support system. Or check your strips and say, is something wrong with them? Are they old? Are they outdated? Have they gotten contaminated? So that's super important when you're buying them in bulk, especially. So I love the new packaging that they are actually individually. I hadn't seen that yet. They're individually wrapped, which is great. And what meter do you have if you're joining? So if you have a meter, put it down below. If you so, don't have a meter, say, <clears throat> I don't have one. So I noticed somebody mentioned that they've got the, the uh, old Keto Mojo. So you know what? If you go and search on their website, you'll what we found is they've got a, um, a trade-in. So if you have the old meter, you can register it with the serial number that's on the back, and that will qualify you for a discount. I think it's almost $45 on the initial starter kit. And what you'll get with the new kit is a nice bag. You'll get... T um, 10, excuse me, it's 60 total. You're going to get 60 glucose strips, 60 ketone strips, meter. There's also lancets in there, and there's also um, test reagents so you can calibrate your system as well. And then they send you a, a postage paid. These are the additional strips. And then you'll get a postage paid um, envelope, excuse me. You'll get a postage paid envelope, and then what you do is simply just Put your old meter in that, and then they send it in and recycle it, and it's through what's called a HIPAA compliant. Um, somebody's asking on blood glucose. You can answer, um, Justin. You ask questions. You, I advocate testing both, absolutely, um, because what happens is that you end up finding <clears throat> you think that your uh, most people think their ketones are going to go up and their blood's going to go down, but that's not always the case. So I think it's uh, uh, important, especially if you're trying to look at certain foods and how your body reacts to certain foods as well. I think that's important to test the glucose as well. They have a new device, it looks like. Uh, no, it's the same Lancet device, but when you trade in the old system, you get a new Lancet um, device oh, yeah, as it is, well. It is the yeah, same. and they're the same um, pens. So I guess contour, and again- That's our blood meter. Yeah, so the blood glucose meter we used before was contour. So again, before Keto Mojo, we had two separate meters, two separate sticks. They were actually twice the price um, that Keto Mojo is when you're buying the- I don't have to be in here. So actually when you're buying the strips, so you're always saying about cost and when you're biohacking, um, you're thinking, gosh, I have to buy two meters, twice the strips, because strips were 3 to $4 about 10 years ago, and I don't know what the price point was. I think the new meter... $5 a strip. Were, sorry. <laughs> it's been like three years ago. <laughs> yeah, $5 a strip. So um, it got quite expensive to see what was happening. So I did do a video, I think, last week on food allergies. That's a great way to tell, especially if you do a fast like we did last week, our reboot, our 60-hour fast, when you go to reintroduce something simply like eggs. We talk about eggs all the time. They are the perfect protein protein when the yolk is not cooked. But they also are the number one food allergy, especially if you're not buying organic. So you check your blood glucose, you check your ketones, you have nice eggs, then check your blood glucose, you know, an hour or two later, if it goes up or spikes up, that could potentially tell you that that's an allergen or butter in your fat coffee, keto cream in your coffee. We share that all the time. Does it break your fast? Well, if your blood glucose goes up, that's a great way to tell if it's breaking your fast. Or if you're intermittent fasting, you think you're doing great, your ketones are high, but you're still having a morning or having that dawn effect where you're having a high blood glucose, that's a great way to biohack and say, what's going on? Again, being a better detective about what's happening within your body um, and fruits turn into fructose just like milk has lactose which is sugar milk so that's a great way to tell if it's causing your blood glucose to soar so Lori had a question there um, she was saying about fruit so we just thought we'd pop on here really quick dr. Ralph texted me and said oh it came in the in the mail I'm like, let's do a video he's like okay and then here I go I just pushed the video on top <laughs> So I said, let's go. <laughs> so if you have questions, drop it down below. We'd be happy to answer those throughout the day. But we're going to put that in the bag here. But just thought we'd help that. The third type uh, of meter we have. Uh, let me just real quick. Uh, somebody's asking about if they uh, have p potential allergy um, to a fruit or a vegetable. Uh, simple biohack. 
Um, I wouldn't use the blood glucose as a meter to do that. I would actually use my pulse to do that. So take a, a resting pulse, eat the food, recheck your pulse at 30 minutes, one hour and two hours and see what happens to your pulse. If it goes up significantly, that's an easy way to say that you might be allergic to that food. That's a simple, easy way to do that. But I wouldn't use blood glucose as a measurement to determine if you're allergic to a food. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're gonna, so that's how they used to do it in the 1940s and 50s, put you in a hospital, they would have you fast. That's how they used to actually check for food allergies. However, we're gonna differ a little bit, but if you're, when people wanna know about their keto cream, if it's breaking your fast, then yes, he's gonna agree with me. You wanna check your blood glucose to see if it's breaking your fast. That's when you wanna check your blood glucose. But again, when you look at things like dairy and diabetes, there's six genetic markers for dairy, I'm sorry, for dairy intolerance or dairy intolerance or dairy allergies and diabetes. So you want to make sure that that's not causing your blood sugar to rise. So there is a point in case you can check that and that's going to be a good biohack. I do have a video on that on my YouTube channel to go more into scientific detail, citing some articles. So yes, you can use it to biohack. The problem is, is that allergens like IgG stay in your system for anywhere from 72 to almost 90 hours. If you have slow motility, you have slow emptying, you have leaky gut, you have SIBO. Sick so, nervous system. Yeah really yeah. slow responsive nervous systems those foods can stay in there for several days so sometimes eating it just one time is not going to tell you but your pulse is a great way to say what's happening right now inside my nervous system it's got to be clean and emptied so that's the only food that's in there when you're checking your pulse good info anybody else have any questions there so again this is dr heather and Dr. Ralph. Coming to you live from Carden Center for Wellness in Oglenburg, Kansas. You guys have an amazing day. We look forward to connecting with you soon here. So again, want to say cheers. And the last thing I didn't say, there's a breath meter. A couple different companies have breath meters. It is checking acetone levels. So that's more for a seizure control. Honestly, I've used a couple different ones and you have to recalibrate it every single time you move the meter from your computer. So you'll log it into a computer. It's checking for acetoacetone. I'm sorry, acetoacetone and you do have to check it so if I move it for my computer at the office I unplug it I move it home I have to recalibrate it to recheck it to check those meters so someone who has epilepsy or has severe seizures or for some other type of tremors who's really checking their um, really checking their ketone level it's amazing for that but you've got to have it really stable you've got to make sure that you're recalibrating each and every time you've got to get new breath tubes breath pipes for it and there is some um, learning curve when you're actually getting installed and reading what those graphs stay so it can be very good information for someone who needs that but I've tried a couple different ones at some different events I actually have a unit at home I never got it to work right. I kept getting false positive, false negatives, and getting information all over the place. So, but I know some people absolutely love it. So there's urine, blood, and breath. Some people just can go by how they feel. But again, if you're cutting calories, you're, you're changing your macros, you're going maybe on a medium to low protein, which I want to make sure women watch their protein level. You want to make sure you're in ketosis so you don't actually cut into your muscle mass. I had somebody last week who lost 10 or 15 pounds and we're checking them on the scale and it can check your fat loss, your water mass, your muscle mass. We actually saw out of the 14 pounds she had lost that 17 pounds, well, I'm not going to give numbers, so I'm going to actually back up here, but some of that was actually lean muscle mass that she had lost. So you just want to make sure you're protecting your lean muscle mass and that's where exogenous ketones can help. That's where exercising more can help and making sure that you're getting enough easily digestible, high quality protein that's hormone free, nitrate free, locally grown when possible, antibiotic free, the higher the quality of protein, the better bioavailable that your body will use that protein. So there we go. I'm going to say goodbye now. Dr. Ralph is already back to work. I'm getting back to work and you guys have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.